Welcome to US Golf TV, presented by Real Feel Golf Mats. In today's episode, we get a look at the new Tour X Rangefinder from Bushnell. Troy Klondrabo helps us get a better read on the greens, and how using the right technology can help us better understand our golf games. Tips, terms, tech, and more. US Golf TV tees off right now. Thanks for watching US Golf TV. I'm Jamie Heggie. Bushnell has been a front runner in rangefinder technology for years, which is why almost every professional on tour relies on their expertise for their own rangefinders. This year's Tour X model boasts all the latest and greatest Bushnell has to offer, from their jolt and dual display technologies to this year's new exchange technology, which allows you to change the faceplates from slope, available to tournament legal when needed. Todd Kolb dropped by to provide a view of his own, showing why Bushnell continues to set the pace in the industry. Professional Todd Kolb here with another PGA Pro review, and today I'm taking a look at the Tour X Rangefinder by Bushnell. When it comes to rangefinders, Bushnell is always at the top of the list. And how do we know that? Well, when you look at the PGA Tour, the LPGA Tour, even at the club level, Bushnell is hands and down the leaders in the industry. It's what you're going to see in golf bags all over the world. Now, this particular year, we're looking at the Tour X. Now, the big feature with the Tour X, the new thing that they've added, is the interchangeable faceplate. Now, what that allows you to do is it allows you to change from slope mode to standard mode. So, that's a great feature to have if you're playing a practice round or in a tournament that might or might not allow you to use the slope edition. Of course, they've also got their jolt technology. I love that because when I laser in on the flag and I hit the button and I get a yardage, I know exactly that I've got the right yardage and that what I'm looking for. A couple other cool features for this particular unit is the ability to change the display from a bright orange to a black color. Now that comes in handy based on the sun or the time of the day that you're playing. Of course, durability is a big factor when you look at rangefinders because you're on the course and you're moving around, you might accidentally drop it. Comes with a great case here that is nice and durable, fits perfect in the hand. What I like about Bushnell is they always also send you with a great carrying case. It fits right on your bag. I love this elastic strap, flips back and forth, it's easy access. So when you're looking at a rangefinder, what are you looking for? Accuracy, durability, and features that make the game more enjoyable. Bushnell has all those things. If you want more information, be sure to check out their website. Practicing your putting stroke can help with consistency, but understanding how to read greens on long putts can be the difference between an easy two-putt and a disappointing three-putt hole. In this edition of Course Management, Troy Klongerbo gives us some basic green reading tips to help us lessen the likelihood of a dreaded three-putt. Hey golfers, Troy Klongerbo here with US Golf TV, and today we're going to talk about course management. Now we're on the green. We've successfully navigated through all the hazards and we're putting. Now you can be on the practice green all you want, working on refining your stroke, working on making that thing perfect, but if you don't understand some of the basics and fundamentals behind green reading, you're going to find some troubles when you're out there. So here's a couple tips when looking at basic green reading. First thing I like to do is as I'm walking up to the hole, take kind of note of where the slopes are the high point, the low point, are there any banks on the sides of the green that may indicate that the ball is going to roll a certain way. Second thing I like to do is when I find my particular putt, I like to fight what's called the straight putt. This is the putt that's going to have no break, it's going to either move straight up the hill or straight down the hill. Now judging on where you are based off that straight putt, your putt's going to break towards that. So if you're left of a straight putt, your ball is going to break right. If you're right of a straight putt, your putt's going to break left. Understanding this is important when making sure that you're picking the right lines when you're hitting putts. Finally, the third thing I like to focus on is just kind of taking in the variables, taking in the green speeds, taking in whether or not it's been mowed, maybe how soft or how firm it is, because these things are all going to be exaggerated when you have your putts breaking. The faster the green is, the more that ball is going to chase out with the slopes and move towards your low spots. The slower they are, the more they might grab and really stay high in their lines. So it's really important to understand these, or these different variables when you're hitting putts. 
Do these tips, pay attention to your green reading, and I guarantee you'll be two-putting far more often. Advancements in technology have shed new light on ball flight, and now that we know what really happens to the golf ball in flight, we can finally fix that nasty slice once and for all. Professional Todd Kolb shows us how the old ball flight laws are just that, old laws. Hey golfers, I'm PGA Teaching Professional Todd Kolb, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most frustrating things in golf, the slice, because I know this, most of you slice a golf ball and it drives you crazy. Now, here's what I want to talk to you, ball flight laws, and I've got, unfortunately, some bad news for you. See, when I entered the golf industry well over 20 years ago, what I was taught on how to fix somebody's slice, unfortunately, has been just proven wrong. So the reality of it is, a lot of you are frustrated and haven't seen any success and on changing that slice because you've been given bad information. What have you been told? Because this is what I was taught. See, there's two things that dictate how the ball curves and what direction it goes. We've got a face, which is the club face, and we've got a path, which is the direction we swing the golf club. Now here's what we were taught as a PGA professional years ago when I entered the golf industry. That is that the ball starts based on the path. So if you want to start the ball to the right of the target, swing the club to the right. And then the second part is that the ball curves based on the face. So if you want it to curve to the left, point it to the left. Well, here's the bad news, folks. Unfortunately, that is just wrong, and that's why a lot of you are probably continuing to struggle with the slice. The good news is, is with technology and advancements, we now know how to fix that with 100% certainty. So next time we visit this topic, I'm going to explain to you what the correct way to fix it is and give you suggestions on how to change that slice into a draw. Coming up after the break, we find out how technology can help our practice plan and much more when U.S. Golf TV returns. Todd Kolb here with U.S. Golf TV and we're at the PGA Merchandise Show and this is always an annual stop for me with my good friend Eddie. We were, we've been talking about high school days and college days and, and just golf and you're back again here with PMP and their great product line that's expanding every year it seems like. Um, first of all, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to and how this company is growing pretty crazy over here the last 12 months. Yeah, you know, we've... Uh um, really been fortunate to bring on Kathy Jensen, who's uh, been t name, nominated Teacher of the Year for 2014, so that's been a big boost in the arm. But um, what's really exciting about uh, PNP Golf is the fact that uh, we have a product that works. You know, the, the people are excited that purchase the product, are really excited about it. And um, we're growing our line. We've got a new putting track, putting aid that's out. It's kind of also used as a party game, a way to introduce people to the game of golf, which is important and um, their, their lines is constantly ex expanding. You guys have been involved here with PNP for a little bit. I want you to tell my viewers, first of all, kind of where you guys are from and a little bit of the story behind how you got involved with the company and kind of where this company is headed. Uh, PNP Golf, it started five years ago. It was the brainchild of my father, actually, who retired and is a very keen golfer. Um, his whole, as he got older, his game was, uh, his handicap was going up and he thought, how can I keep it stabilised? So he really wanted to, he invented these clubs that made the short game easier. It's taken about uh, five years to, from, from conception through to where we are today. A couple of years of development, then getting the clubs made, and then we've through about four or five iterations of the club now to get it to the point that it's been right to come to the PGA show, to, to put it on the biggest world stage. I'm here talking to Kathy at PMP here. You are one of the top teachers in our country, and the fact that you're here at this booth, first of all, says a lot about the product. So talk to us a little bit about how it's making a difference in people that you're working with on a regular basis. Well, this, uh, the rake wedges are amazing by PNP Golf, and they got the point and putt putters that are awesome. Uh, the rake wedges come out of the sand and they work. They're a different, unique kind of a sand wedge because it got the dual rail system. Uh, because of that, you're going to find it glides through and cuts. It's got a better, sharper leading edge to help them pop it up out of the sand in one, and that's what they're looking for. Uh, it also combs through really tough, tall, rough, and it combs through it so it doesn't twist and turn. Uh, gives them a better feel. Uh, it also comes off of hot, tight lies. I use it all around the green, really. And so the, the I mean, somebody of your stature and, and being recognized by the PGA as one of our best instructors or top instructors this year, I mean, you're not going to align yourself 
with I'm assuming any product. So tell us a little bit about the company. How did you get involved with this company and why are you here today when you could probably be at a lot of different booths really endorsing their product? Right. Well, um, as, and I'm also the first female ever to receive this honor, so that's quite a big st platform to take. And uh, I've been with this company for about a year. We introduced it to the States. It's made in Australia. Uh, the inventor's uh, brilliant. I thought the design was, it, it just made total sense. Uh, as far as uh, creating some programs, we do a lot of wine and wedges to expose it and create an atmosphere that's fun and have them try it out and you'd be surprised how many go, go away so we have to order more. The value of this, these products is they're designed for specific needs, um, people who have pains in the bunker, pains out of, around the greens, pains with their alignment, that's all these products are, are based around is uh, dealing with people's issues on the course. Um, if you want to save strokes, you, you're going to want to carry these clubs in your bag. And what I like about what you're saying there is not only are we working on those shots around the green where we can save a lot of strokes, but, but, the, but the design of the club is really addressing things that are difficult to help people with. I mean, bunker shots are tough to teach, hard pan shots, thick rough are tough to teach. So uh, they, want to, they want to buy one, they want to find out more information, where are they going to do that? If you go to pnpgolf.com, you can purchase any of these products, find a lot of videos and uh, um, educational things so you can understand how the products work and the science behind them and yeah pnpgolf.com is where you want to find uh, these products. Okay well I tell you, this is this is uh, Kathy's teacher of the year first of all congratulations on that and the and the first female one ever for us as PJ members is really exciting you're a great ambassador not only for the game but for trying to grow the game and and uh, she wouldn't be involved with this company if it wasn't a quality product so we appreciate you taking time and good luck with the rest of the show. Thank you Todd thank, thank you very you. much it's very nice. Welcome back to US Golf TV, presented by Real Field Golf Mats. If you want to be a successful golfer, you must have a proper practice plan. Having distances and targets in your practice plan is also key. And in this segment of Teaching with Technology, we see how the Skills app on the new FlightScope X2 Elite can help you dial in those distances on the driving range. PGA professional Todd Kolb here with another segment of Teaching with Technology. Now today I want to talk to you about developing a quality practice plan so that you can get the most out of your practice sessions. Now every good practice plan should have specific distances and specific targets. So today I'm here at the driving range and if I'm going to hit golf balls I should of course have a specific target, a yardage and how wide that target is so that I can really test where I'm at and am I getting any better in the things that I'm working on in my golf swing or in my game, in the game of golf. Now I have, I'm lucky, I've got a FlightScope X2 Elite so I can actually use the Skills app. Now what the Skills app allows me to do is it allows me to set a target distance of, of anything I want. I mean from 40 yards up to 300, whatever I want. I can also set the target width to whatever it is. So if I've got a high skilled player, that target is going to be pretty small. And if I've got somebody who's shooting 95 to 100, I'm going to make that target a little bit bigger. Now I can also move that target left or I can move that target to the right. The point is this, is that the technology allows me as an instructor to customize the practice plan, the session for the student's ability. So as a golfer, when you go to the driving range, make sure that you have a plan. Make sure that your plan includes specific targets, specific distances, so that you can actually track your progress. And if you do that, you're going to get more out of your practice session, and you're going to see your game start to improve. Coming up after the break, we get a look at some clothing options from Antigua. Stay with us. U.S. Golf TV is back in just two minutes. I'm Todd Cole with U.S. Golf TV, and I'm here with Ron from Antigua. And Ron, we have been talking about a lot of different things. But today, right now, we're going to talk about a, pro a product and a, and a fabric that's been around for a long time. We're going to talk a little bit about cotton and kind of a, a resurgence of it. Tell me a little bit about what you're seeing in the industry and, and why you make a new offering here with some product. Well, over the last, say, 10 years, synthetics have, have dominated in the golf market as far as the golf shirt or the polo shirt or the long sleeve golf shirt or whatever. And, you know, the synthetic had a lot of advantages with moisture management and, and maintenance as far as washability and ironing and those types of things. But we were still hearing from the buyers and from the consumers that need for that soft kind of casual feel that cotton provides. So we decided this year to test a small collection 
We wanted to make sure that the cotton that we did offer was a blend that still had moisture management capacity. We weren't interested in going back to the days of mercerized cotton. While a fine fabric, it does not wick moisture. So definitely had to do a blend. So these are 60 cotton, 40 poly blends. They do have moisture management capacity, but they get that soft cotton hand that a lot of consumers have been uh, requesting. Because cause, cause, uh, a big part of, of fabric, and of course, is the not only the design, but but of course the feel of the shirt. So right. show us a couple. I mean, give us a couple examples of when you're talking about these things. What we're going to see? Here's a traditional golf stripe, you know, designed you know for us to put a logo in there for our for our club or for the consumer with his with his country club, and it's just a softer hand. Here's one of the uh, long sleeve overtops. Again, it's just got that softer feel that some consumers are asking for. So. We said, let's give them a small collection. Let's see how, how we're going to do with it. And so far, so good. It's going pretty good. And is this, is this the first year that we're doing? Just started shipping within the last two weeks. Well, cotton is a, is, is a fabric. Of course, it's been around for a long time. I don't need to tell yeah, you that. We're, that. We're, <laughs> introdu we're introducing something new, cotton. <laughs> <laughs> and so Antigua, of course, always on the leading edge of, of new things, but also giving the consumer what they want when they found things that they like. Cotton's a big part of that. It's a big part of the of the launch here uh, this year for Antigua. Good luck with this new line, and I'm, we're looking forward to seeing it. Thanks so much. It's now time for another Daily Divot, presented by The Prairie Secret. A silver medalist and two-time track and field gold medalist at the 1932 Olympics, Babe Zaharias was the first woman to compete in a men's professional golf tournament, the Los Angeles Open in 1938. A six-time Associated Press Female Athlete of the Year and founding member of the LPGA, she remains the only female to make a PGA cut, a feat she accomplished on three separate occasions. U.S. Golf TV will be back shortly, so stay tuned. I'm Todd Cole with U.S. Golf TV, and I'm here at the PGA Merchandise Show in Corky. We have crossed paths a couple times over the last few years, and what has been really exciting for me is, is that this was just a concept not that long ago that you had brought to market first time, and now all of a sudden you've reinvented it. It's much more improved, and here we are today. You've got a great booth. You've had a lot of activity. Tell our viewers a little bit about what you've done to this product to make it even that much better. Sure. Well, 1986, Todd, I started with the original nightlight golf ball. I had a little light stick popped it inside. It wasn't a real golf ball, but golfers wanted to play golf in the dark. A lot, lot of fun. Tournaments all over the world. But nobody ever used it for my original intention, which was playing in the afternoon right into twilight. So in the evolution of things, we were able to come up with a ball that is now light for night that hits just like a Titleist. Uh, we actually put it up against Bridgestone's best ball, the Tour RX-330, uh, and uh, beat this right across the board. We have right here uh, Kevin Bullard. He won the REMAX Long Drive Championship twice in Vegas. You probably watched that in October. And um, Kevin hit that. It hit our ball 400 yards. So this is a real ball. And where we're going with it is we're trying to get the golf pros to first run a tournament. What that does is, is educate the golfers that A, the ball lights up, B, it hits like a Titleist. And that way, they'll come back in, they'll order more balls, and that's going to drive more rounds, more revenue at his golf course. Basically, this charger produces 250 lumens of light, 15 high-intensity LEDs, and it cooks the molecules inside the pigment, which is impregnated into the sirloin. It's not on the outside, it's on the inside. So if you're fortunate, Todd, to live to be 119 years old, you'll still be able to light up the balls. Pop, pop the top. You'll hear a little tiny beep, cooks the molecules 45 seconds, spins them, pops it up, ball's lit, ready to go. Anytime you want a brighter ball, just pop one in, cook another one, fits right in the golf cart drink holder. So when you leave that green, go into that tea box, you just cook another one on the way over. Well, I know after this show, because I've walked by here a couple of times, there's been a lot of people walking around, a lot of excitement. And what you've done is, this is a real golf ball. Real golf ball. It's a real golf ball that works. You can play it at night. Um, it's been exciting to see it come all the way this far. And if you're looking to get it, you're going to see it in your local golf shops. You're going to see it online. You're going to see it all over. And I know that uh, for those of us who like to play a little bit at night every once in a while, this would be something we're going to take a look at. Corky, good luck with the project. Good luck with the rest of the show. Thank you more, Todd. I appreciate it. Welcome back to U.S. Golf TV, presented by Real Field Golf Mats. When most amateur golfers have a shot near the green, they immediately go for a wedge. But in this edition of On the Lesson Tee, Todd Kolb shows that hitting a bump and run with an iron or even putting the ball may be a better or safer option.
I'm PGA Teaching Professional Todd Kolb here with another segment of On The Lesson Tee. And today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most basic shots in golf, the bump and run or the chip shot. Now this is a shot that gives a lot of people difficulty simply because, in my opinion, they're using the wrong club. So in this particular situation, I've got a shot here where I've got a lot of green to work with, meaning I can really get the ball on the ground and rolling to the pin. A lot of people will use their most lofted club when it comes to chipping. They just always assume that a chip shot means a sand wedge. So they'll use a club like I have here, my 58 degree. Now you can be successful using that, but what you're going to find is that it requires you to hit the ball further in the air, moving your landing spot that much further away from you and therefore making the shot a little bit more difficult. My preference would be to use a club with a little less loft like I have here, like a 9 iron. That way you can land the ball a little bit closer to where you're standing, i.e. move your landing spot closer to you, allow the ball to roll to the pin, which will make the shot that much easier. Now if you're one of those people who really struggle with chipping and it's just a difficult shot for you, you can always go to your putter. Even if the grass is a little bit longer, the phrase of your worst putt is always better than your worst trip really rings home in this particular situation. So when it comes to hitting a chip shot, be aware of the club you're using, get the ball on the ground, get it rolling, and you'll find that those shots finish much closer to the hole. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of U.S. Golf TV. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter for show listings, free giveaways, great coupons, tournament info, tips, and more. We'll see you online at usgolftv.com, or check out our YouTube channel for more great videos. For continuous golf news, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. For U.S. Golf TV, I'm Jamie Heggie. We'll see you next time. Okay. Three, two. Hello. People will use when they first get on the on the. Oh, sorry. It's been a front runner. <laughs> now that's people. Truck went by, yeah. and we'd love to help you guys shoot lower. The lower gonna love you bad bit. So how, how does that one go? Say it out loud. How you would say something. Short game guru getting some short game practice in. <laughs> <laughs>